say, birds of a feather flock together. You run around with losers, you will end up a loser. Unconsciously, unconsciously, you will pick up their ways, you'll pick up their habits, you'll pick up, most importantly, their attitude about life. If you're around cynical, negative people all the time, you will become cynical and negative. So you got to watch yourself. Many of us are living out the lives of other people, living out their conclusions, living out of their consciousness. The other thing is that you begin to look at, looking at your life and looking at what it is that you want to achieve, another crucial thing that you must do is align yourself with powerful people. Align yourself with people that can encourage you, people that can empower you, people that you can learn from, people that you can grow from. That's very important. See, if you have people around you that can contribute to your growth, when I wanted to become a speaker, I joined the National Speakers Association. I wanted to be around the Dr. Norman Vincent Peels, the Zig Ziglers, the Dwayne Dyers. I wanted to be around people that were doing what I wanted to do. I wanted to learn from them. And you want to do that too. You want to align yourself with people who think like you, people who dream like you, people who want more out of life, people that are stretching and searching and seeking some higher ground in life. As opposed to the majority of people, somebody said, always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. And see, you don't want to be on the bottom. See, it's easy to be on the bottom. It doesn't take any effort to be a loser. It doesn't take any motivation, any drive in order to stay down there on a low level. But it calls on everything in you, ladies and gentlemen. You have to harness your will to say, I'm going to challenge myself. Sometimes I have to pull myself out of bed and say, come on, Les. Things I know I should do, I don't do. Things I shouldn't do, I do. I found that the biggest enemy you have to deal with is yourself. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. So think about that. So as you begin to look toward making this your decade, as you begin to look toward making your life different, as you begin to look at yourself, you've got to redefine yourself. Who are you right now? And who must you become in order to create what you want? What has to change about you? What is it that you're doing right now that would be a liability for you? As you begin to look toward the future and take inventory of yourself. What is it about you right now that you've got to leave this behind because this no longer fits? Looking at where you want to go and the kind of person that you must become, the kind of standards that you have for you. What is it that you must do differently? Repeat out to me, please. If you want to keep on getting what you're getting, keep on doing what you're doing. See, that doesn't take an Einstein for that one. All right? It makes sense. Unless you change your pattern, unless you change the way you're thinking, unless you change your behavior, you're going to continue to produce the results in your life. See, all of us are winners, but some of us are producing results that we don't want. And so all you have to do is look at your game plan, look at your strategy. How is it that you have been being? What is it that you've been doing to produce this? So you're the director, you're the producer, you're writing the script, you're the star of your life. And as you begin to look at your life, you can decide whether or not it's a smash or whether or not it's a flop. That's in your hands. Look at your life. Look at where you want to go. Don't worry about your circumstances. Don't worry about your age. I have a friend who's up in age, over 70, and she wanted to build a multi-million dollar complex. Her name is Dr. Johnny Coleman. Lenders and bankers say, you can't do that. You're too old. She ignored them. That building now stands, ladies and gentlemen, a multi-million dollar structure. But there are a lot of people who would have listened to that. There are a lot of people that would not have even gotten to that point. They would have talked themselves out of even going down to the bank to ask for it. Because they've already said no to themselves. See, it's time now. If you want to make this your decade, you've got to start saying yes to your life. You've got to start saying yes to your dreams. Yes to your unfolding future. Yes to your potential. As opposed to saying no. See, 87% of our self-talk is negative. So you've got to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to say yes to your dreams. Why not? Why not me? Don't spend time like most people going through life complaining. Don't try and get on talk shows and tell everybody how life has done you wrong. Here's what's happening in the audience. 80% don't care. And 50% glad it's you. So, so when you 
you know that? You don't go around cooking crowds. You know what they did to me? Who cares? Get away from me before they come back. <laughs> I had a friend of mine that said something that's very important. He said, hey, it doesn't matter what happens to you. The only thing matters, what are you going to do about it? That's all that matters. Okay, life knocked you down. What are you going to do about it? How long are you going to sit there and say, you know what they did to me? How long? Who wants to hear that racket? Use that energy to get up from there and move on and get on with your life. You've got to learn to let the past go so you can grow. Many people never act on their dreams because they allow their past experiences to determine what their possibilities are. Whatever you've done in the past, that's not a reflection of your possibilities. That's just a reflection of your consciousness. That's just a reflection of your development and your growth. The future is unfolding for you right now. The future is unlimited for you right now. No one knows where you can go. No one knows what you're, po what you're capable of or what's possible for you. You don't even know that. I, I had no idea, ladies and gentlemen. No one could have convinced me that I was able to do this. i never forget, I was speaking in Detroit, and a high school friend of mine saw me afterwards, and he was backstage. He said, I can't believe it's the same person. And I thought for a moment, and I said, it's not. The person you know, he's gone. <laughs> he doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> we have the power to change our personal history changing the direction of our lives, changing our thoughts, changing where we want to go, exploring new horizons. So as you begin to look at this decade and affirming that this is your decade, as you set goals that will make you stretch, that will bring out the best in you, as you begin to remove the negative, toxic people from your life, as you decide to take some chances in life, and that's one of the things that's very important. Viscard said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you cannot be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? I'll never forget when I reached my first major goal of buying my mother at home. I'll never forget what it was like. And you're going to have this experience when you reach some major goal. When I drove up to the house and I got out and, and I gave Mama the key. And I said, Mama... This is for you. I'll never forget the look on her face. She said, she said, oh, my God. No one could have convinced me when I adopted you all that this would happen. She said, oh, thank you. And she said, and you, <laughs> you caused me so many damn problems. <laughs>